inevitable weaponization of app data is here. You and I had spoken about this. If I get the microphone to stay where it belongs. You and I spoke about this in the past. Yes. What did we say the crown jewel of data was? Location. Yes. The Nazis knew it. Mm-hmm. If you um, if you prevent freedom of movement, then you have full control. Yes. That's what it is. <laughs> so what happens when you're tracked all the damn time? And here's the worst part. If you're tracked, someone knows your location data, and then they sell that to third parties, mm-hmm. that's horrible. Say they don't know your lo- location data specifically, like the GPS. Right. But what happens when you use some sort of contactless payment option or you walk into a building that sends off a ping to an advertiser? They would know immediately in the general area this is where you are, regardless of the GPS. It would be interesting if the, if they could tell you, because obviously I have an Apple phone, so Apple knows my location. All the time. Uh, I have T-Mobile. T-Mobile knows my location. All the time. I have Google Maps, so Google knows my location. They All even the send me emails about it like, mm-hmm. hey, you went to eight cities and you, you walked 76 miles. I went around the globe 1.3 times. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All that stuff. You know, mm-hmm. they're making it pretty sounding. Yeah. You know, that they're, they're, they're super stalking you. But, you know, whenever you think of, whenever you think of location data, it's like every time you download an app. They all want it. You're giving consent to something. And if you don't take the time to look at the privacy privacy statement and see what they're pulling out of your your data, and, and Apple's kind of done a better job, but they're they're it's they, kind of like the, changed, the, the except they made it more made it more forward. Yeah, it, it was in the background, right? And now they tell you it's in the foreground. But Apple and Google, I think, are number one. Of course, they're number one. Nobody would prevent your location data from being shared with them if you know, in whatever format, if they didn't have another option for tracking. Yeah. And it's so funny. People are like, well, you know, Apple got this for me for free or Google, you know, Gmail's free. If a tech company gives you something for free, you should be worried. <laughs> you should be worried. If Gmail is free, there's a reason. Yeah. <laughs> if you're G- if the uh, Google calendars, there's a reason. <laughs> yeah. Well, Tartle's free. Yes. But we're not giving you anything. You have to do all the work yourself. Yes different story yeah whole, totally different story. oh by the way we can't see any of your data yes 100%. and if we wanted it we'd have to buy it from you we do tardo has to buy it talk about smoking your own dope yes <laughs> so let's talk about the inevitable weaponization of app data here and there's a situation that happened um we've seen it with researchers journalists even governments mm-hmm. have used highly sensitive location data from a smartphone app to track and public harass a specific person in this case there was a catholic substack publication the pillar and it said it used location data ultimately tied to Grinder, mm-hmm. um, which is a, an app, to trace the movements of a priest and then outed him publicly um, without his consent. And this is in the Washington Post. It was reported on Tuesday, which ended up leading to his resignation. So they – I don't really, frankly, care what the priest does. Yeah. That's his thing. Yeah. But He's for somebody else to talk about someone else and that's – essentially their private manner or their private choices. And for you to expose that without their consent, without them being a part of it, or even being aware of the fact that they were being tracked. That's a problem. Well, the problem is, is the trickle down effect of what they talk about is corporations, intelligence agencies. Now the article says any sort of disgruntled, unscrupulous or dangerous individual. Yeah. And then it talks about the same thing with Europol. Yeah. And this is where Tartle gets involved with this article. It says a growing market of data brokers that collect and sell data from countless apps have made it so that anyone with a bit of cash and effort can figure out which phone is a so-called um, data set belongs to a target and abuse that information. Think about how many tech startups there have been. They're not all making big revenue off of their product. No. Let's be clear about this. Yes. Their investors are pushing these guys for returns unreasonable stuff. They try and push us to frankly quite, you know, some unreasonable things, but we are not going to change our model and say, Oh, we got to find another revenue stream. We got to start selling people's data. We can't do that. Our model doesn't fundamentally work like that. We do one thing. We help people move their data. (laughs) You know what I mean? We're a marketplace of data. Yeah, Yeah. We're a data marketplace. So that's the problem. So these data brokers are bloodthirsty to get this stuff moved and they'll sell it to anybody. Even if these companies sold, we have to be clear about this. Even if these companies sold these anonymized data sets, there is 
plenty of information in it for them to track it back to you. There's only a certain amount of characteristics of a human being. Yes. That is needed to actually find out who that person is amongst 8.242 billion people on this planet. That's the problem. And this is the crazy part. Um, Senator Ron Wyden, um, in a statement responding to this incident that happened, data brokers and advertising companies have lied to the public. This is what the senator's saying. Assuring them that the information they collected was anonymous. As this awful, awful episode demonstrates, these claims were bogus. Individuals can be tracked and identified. So can I, I want to clarify this one more time. In an anonymized data set, and I hope we, we make like a little short clip about this. In an anonymized data set, if there are things that are materialistically characteristic of you as a human being, right? you don't have to put the name in there. Mm-mm. You don't have to put the address. You have very specific features, the geometry of your face, your body, tattoos, the things you buy, whatever it might be. Those things are highly identifiable of who you mm-hmm. are. So even if someone says, oh, it's anonymized, they took the name off of it. With very few characteristics, they're going to know exactly who that person is. The only thing that's truly anonymous is thought. So if you remove the name and someone's just buying data, brokers were just giving out data on just people's thoughts, that stuff's inherently anonymous. Well, I mean, this is scary because this person was the general secretary of the U.S. Bishops Conference in the in the church. And like we said, we don't care about any of this. So he had visited different bars mm-hmm. um, and was using this dating app and then um, went to private residence and they tracked all that. They tracked what bars he went to, the private residences he went to from 2018 to 2020. This is the crazy part. And then they got it from a data vendor. Yeah. So whenever you're looking at at something like this that is so it, this is this is a person's life that was ruined. Absolutely destroyed. Yes. They've lived for 40, 50 years just going about their merry way. Yes. And just wrecked them. You know, if you put, if the shoe was on the other foot, right? What if I went to the CEO of Grinder, and I was like, hey, I'm just going to track you for a little bit and everywhere you go. I want to know your relationships that you've been into with these people. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to tell every single person in the press about your sexual relationships. Sound good? (laughs) <laughs> he wouldn't stand for that in a second. So well, why is it that it's okay mm-hmm. to do this sort of analysis tracking and correlative research on other people using the app and then brokering that information off for your material economic benefit? Well, it gets worse because they ask Grinder about it. So now as a company, you have a choice to make. Yep. Um, Own up to it or... Well, here's the spokesperson. Dodge it. Here's what Grinder said. Grinder's response is aligned with the editorial story published by the Washington Post, which describes the original blog post from The Pillar as homophobic and full of unsubstantiated uh, innuendo. The alleged activities listed in that unattributed blog post are infeasible from a technical standpoint and incredibly unlikely to incur. This is absolutely no evidence supporting the allegation of improper data collection or usage related to the Grinder app as purported. So, what I want people to understand is this infeasible from a, a technical standpoint. That's not true. But in January, the Norwegian Data Protection Authority fined Grinder eleven point seven million dollars for providing its user data to third parties, yeah. including their precise location data. Correct. No, th- what do they do? Don't focus on. Don't even talk about remotely what you did. Bash the article. Bash everything else except owning up to the fact that you created this problem. Yeah, and and the, the sad part is. Uh, this is horrific, but there are. This is the sad part about it. There are countries that are out there, and this article talks about that yeah. where homosexuality is illegal. Mm-hmm. So, which you're going at somebody's free will, and we're we don't even get me yeah that. D- yeah we're not even going to talk into that part. But it's horrific. It's it's mm-hmm. an atrocity. It's a human. That's a human rights issue. It's a human rights issue. And that's where the Nor- Norwegian authorities are at the time because now, let's say you're on the Grinder app, you're in one of these countries. Now there's an issue with you being targeted with illegal activity. Correct. So you're automatically a felon in a country because some CEO thought it was a great idea to make an economic income stream off of brokering your private data to third parties about your own personal life. Well, and and this is, I don't mean to interrupt you, but this Zach Edwards, a researcher, he says it in a great way. What it's exactly what you're saying. He says it this way. 
No one should be doxxed and outed for adult consenting relationships. Correct. But Grindr never treated their own users with the respect they deserve. And the Grindr app has shared user data to dozens of ad tech and analytics vendors over the years. I have, I was at a, not at, wasn't working for, I was working for a consulting firm um, some time ago up in the Northeast. And a company had reached out uh, regarding a, a new tool for banks to understand their customers better. Data insights. Mm-hmm. And this is a relatively new firm, but you know they had a good amount of money and they're, they're up there in Boston. So I went into their offices and they gave us a presentation. How little they need and where they get the data from mm-hmm. and how it's triangulated was shocking. When you call into a call center, you know how they say these calls are recorded? The tone of your voice, Mm -hmm. the length of time you're speaking, regardless of the call center, all get roped into one singular algorithm. So it doesn't matter what company you call, wherever, they knew exactly who it is. It doesn't matter what the phone number is. Just off the tone of your voice for the cadence of your speech. Well, the sad part, too, is if you're calling AT&T and then you're calling um, Comcast and then you're calling what, what you know Levi's with all those having issues or orders they're they're collecting your voice they know who you are they're they're collecting your voice data over they're saying okay here's Jason Rigby mm-hmm. um he's called these three people he's you know this he has this response to customer service yeah and then they can give you a social score which is what the Chinese are doing right <laughs> credit social systems there, the, but here's the most difficult part, and I will share this with anyone who's listening. I asked them there because I didn't agree with what was going on. And by the way, we didn't go through with using their products. I said, what is the most difficult or what is the highest point of friction for you really getting a full profile on someone? Mm-hmm. And they said, there's two things, location data and IP address. Those are the crown jewels for all of these algorithms. So I would tell all of you, don't share your damn location data with anybody unless you know specifically it's, how it's going to be used. And two, get a VPN. Well, also, you know, there's this new industry coming, identity resolution industry. It's what they call it. It's a, it's a nice way for, um, it's a nice way for customers to buy sensitive data. So these companies promise to match mobile advertising IDs, unique codes assigned to mobile phones by their opportunities, in which tech companies have repeatedly assured consumers are anonymous, so or at least pseudonymous to real world identities. This makes unmasking people and data sets even easier because you have the mobile ID number, so you can take the data that you have now, correlate it together, and then you can figure out which phone belongs to who I have just li- by buying that information. It's very simple. I've literally seen how the feds use IMEI numbers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you would, when you think you're connected to a cell tower, you don't understand that you are pre-hopped, which means it's going to hit essentially a false tower first to collect all those numbers and track everybody wherever they're going before it goes to the real tower. They do it all the time. They put them on cars. Yeah, I mean, I, I would imagine the the government is probably the worst at this. Well, they don't care. Governments. What do plural. they care? Yeah. I mean, it, uh, look at look at because uh, you got to think of it. So let's say the crown jewels of of data privacy. What what countries would be the best? Maybe some in the UK. You know, um, we're probably one of the worst here in the United States. But think about countries like China or Russia or some of these other countries that do not give two fucks. They don't care at all. Think about what they're getting and what data information they have. Everything. I mean, they have that. They have surveillance systems. Ever Snowden, uh, X key score. Yeah. They're just tapping into your webcam. <laughs> they don't have to turn the light on. Why do you think they offer those webcam cover things? Yeah. The light don't have to be on for it to work. No. Do you know that every single, you know the old school TV receivers for cable or like direct TV and stuff like that? They all had microphones in them. Well, I mean, two episodes ago or whatever it was, we talked about Europol collecting all this data. I yeah. mean, it, it's just constant. Nielsen, the metrics company? Yeah. You think your cable box just magically has this data? It's, it, I thought it was just a cable. I thought it was just copper wire coming in here. There's so much more going on. Well, my girlfriend and I, we, we put one of the little Google uh, speakers mm-hmm. uh, in the bedroom. And so then it was funny how all of a sudden, I don't know, this could be a conspiracy theory. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's funny how all of a sudden our ads were about stuff that we were talking about. 
does it all the time. We've seen it with Instagram. The mic's yeah. always on. Yeah. They're always listening to your voice. Skype does this. Well, I know Apple got in trouble for that in some, some country in the EU. Yeah, but Skype still does it. Yeah. They transcribe hundreds of languages mm-hmm. all the time. <laughs> There's just, we're just, every time someone goes on Skype to do a call, you're just feeding their algorithms. Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. <sighs> so, so, like I said, we, we wanted to bring this up because this is the seriousness of this. Mm-hmm. You're taking somebody that had a career um, that had been in, 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 in the public limelight, uh, not doing anything wrong. No, nothing wrong. Doing nothing wrong. And in turn, they get outed, have to resign because somebody doesn't like this person decides to use the data that they were creating themselves that they had rightful ownership of to then take that from them and use it against them. This is game of Thrones shit. This is game of Thrones in 2022. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just at Jason, it's just wrong. It's just flat out wrong. Mm-hmm. There's no other way to describe it other than when it's just so inconsolably, it's just gross. Yes. No one cares. Think about how people act on Twitter. Mm-hmm. You think they're going to give a shit using your data against you? So, so how instead of them just taking this data for free and then making us slaves to them mm-hmm. because we're not getting paid for it, how how can somebody sign up for Turtle? How 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 long does it take? Literally, thirty seconds. Yeah, it's like thirty seconds. You got a PayPal account? How quick is it to get your wallet set up to start getting paid for data? Well, I mean, if you have like a a you know, password manager yeah. and it auto populates. I don't know, 10 seconds? Yeah. If that. So then you have a wallet. Oh, so you have PayPal. You have PayPal. And so if you're one of the 200 plus countries that work with PayPal, you're in. Yeah. Oh, oh if you have social media data and stuff like that that you want to pull back down and take ownership of, and you want to sell it to the advertising companies, do it. Yeah. That's that's what we're here for. You want to participate in the health study, but have control over all the information and not some group of lawyers or somebody else? Do it. It's all you. Yeah. So when we when we say take control of your data, what do you mean by that? Taking control of your data means I'm going to, the information which I create on my phone, computer, laptop, walking into a hospital, anytime I'm tracked, that information is my asset. I have worked to create it. So I'm going to take that thing which I own, put it in my hands, and I'm going to choose to share it on my time, not some third party to broker it away like Grindr did. Okay? It's my choice, my time, my data. I'll share it at turtle.co. 